This is just an example of the difference in imaging quality that you get with conventional versus this point localization microscopy. Both these images are represent an aggregate of polystyrene beads where the beads are 50 nanometers in diameter. To the left is the appearance of these beads imaged using conventional microscopy where your XY resolution is no better than about 250 nanometers. To the right is a palm image. Palm is photoactivated localization microscopy which uses these photoactivatable fluorescent proteins to determine with very high precision the position of individual molecules. And what that allows you to do is to get much greater resolution. In this case, we have an XY resolution of about 20 nanometers, about a tenfold improvement. And if we zoom up this image, you can see uh, where, whereas with conventional imaging, you, all of the polystyrene beads, the fluorescence associated with those beads just merged into one big blob. In the case of this point localization super resolution approach, you can see the distribution of each one of these individual molecules. The strategy using these photoactivatable fluorescent proteins for improving uh, resolution uh, is based on their ability to be switched on from a dark state. Um, that allows one to highlight individual molecules and build a super resolution image of the distribution of those individual molecules where each molecule has been um, its position has been precisely determined and you build your image up in the same way as a Monet painting where you have individual points uh, that when you look at it as a whole you can see um, a picture and so these uh, point localization microscopy uh, approaches using these photoactivatable or photo switchable fluorescent proteins allows us to be able to paint pictures of the cell at up to 20 nanometer resolution, um, which is a tenfold improvement over what's possible using conventional imaging approaches. So this illustrates how these photoactivatable fluorescent proteins work. Um, you can express them as an exogenous protein within cells of interest. And because they are invisible until they've been highlighted with a UV light pulse, the cell is essentially invisible until you've switched on a subpopulation of these molecules. Once that's happened, you can track those molecules until they are destroyed within the cell. And this offers tremendous insight into understanding how different molecules can move from one site to another within the cell. So in the area of HIV, uh, super resolution imaging offers lots of um, uh, possibilities for understanding how the virus is actually assembling on the plasma membrane. What are the specific molecules that are involved in that? Um, now that has been, I mean, there's been a lot of work biochemically showing proteins that are important for HIV budding, but how those proteins are actually spatial temporally organized during the budding process is very unclear. There's a lot of other issues related to how viruses can um, enter cells. And again, super resolution imaging is going to play, I think, an important role in allowing us to understand how individual molecules that are floating and diffusing on the plasma membrane um, change their behavior in response to uh, the association of the virus with that uh, surface um, in preparation for the virus uh, being taken up by the cell.